Anyway, um, these waffles, man, they are good texturally. They're good flavor wise. They're good functionally speaking. They taste amazing. They got good mouthfeel and they are just this perfect little storage unit block mm-hmm. for other toppings. I do like the little pockets in a waffle. So some quick history in like medieval times, ninth century or so. Um, there were, uh, there was this thing in Europe and it wasn't really a waffle, but it was sort of the origins of the waffle iron. It was a wafer iron, uh, oh. and sometimes more specifically a communion wafer iron. So they would have sort of, uh, these intricate biblical sort of insignias on them. And then they would put some, you know, simple dough in there and press it down real, real flat and have a communion wafer with like, Jesus on it. And now when that happens, it's like a miracle because there's not a Jesus on the waffle iron. He just got in there somehow. (laughs) Um, Just rascally like that. And uh, that is kind of like where the origin of the waffle iron comes from. Uh, It wasn't until like the 15th century that it sort of started to have this waffle-like shape that we know today. Uh, And this waffle iron became sort of more commonplace in certain European regions, including notably Belgium. Um, And over the next like few hundred years, different countries would like put their different spins on the batter recipe, uh, adding and removing like sweeteners and dealing with different levels of fluffiness. Um, And that's why there's sort of a diversity of, of different waffles uh, depending on you know where you are in the world um in the early 20th century the waffles had become like less of a like an artisanal thing that you would like get at a restaurant and had become sort of a household food mm-hmm. like a simple uh household food uh in the 1930s they started to introduce you know waffle pancake mixes from uh aunt jemima or aunt jemima I always say aunt, but aunt Jemima sounds wild, doesn't it? <sighs> aunt always sounds wild to me, Griffin. You uh, know that. Bisquick also showed up in this time. And also there were, uh, there were a team of three brothers known as the Dorses. And, uh, they went on to found Ego in 1953 because they like solved how to do like commercial frozen yeah. waffles. Uh, and they, you know, ruled the roost. Um, I am super not picky about waffles. I like a frozen waffle just because it is so easy to get them. Syrup is like the best j- fluid is the best is the world's best liquid. And there are not a lot of ways to really enjoy syrup in a like a acceptable, publicly acceptable manner, except for the waffle. And the waffle is just like, you know, you get a waffle and it's like a four by four grid. That's 16 little cups, little shots of syrup you're about to do. And you're going to eat the cup too. Uh, <laughs> can I tell our listeners about the, the great breakfast purchases that you repeatedly made for a while? Yeah, I got sort of stuck in like a looper, like time time loop. We would decide of. that we wanted to make breakfast, whether it was pancakes or waffles. And each time it was as if Griffin's memory had been erased. And so he would go out and he would buy more syrup. Uh, kind of like the memento guy. And then you would wake up every day and then you would have to remember that we had syrup. And so yeah. we had like... Four bottles of syrup in our house. We had for a, a great long deal time. of syrup and a lot of mix, a lot of syrup, a lot of, yeah. uh, pancake waffle mix. Yes. Um, that I definitely didn't use.